So thank you again, Crystal, for coming in tonight and sharing uh, your experience in the certification program and really just wanted to have you share with the students like what it was like for you to go through the program, what it's been like for you after the program, and if there's any tips that you could give to them, because um, we're about three weeks away from graduation. Um, and so if there's anything in these last three weeks that you can share some words of wisdom, um, we're happy to hear it. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for having me. I really appreciate your guys' time. Um, well, it was, it was a really great experience being able to even connect with Jennifer. Um, so I'm in San Diego. I don't know where you all are located from, but um, I kind of just did a Google search, trying to find the right school that would be a good fit for me. And everything that kept popping up was just very white woman based, you know, and, and it was hard to find something that fit what I needed. Um, I wanted a program that was going to be BIPOC friendly, LGBT friendly, just really getting the root of the minority and being able to work with the magic that we have. Um, so when I saw, as soon as I typed that in Google search and I found uh, the Mystic Living School, it was really great to be able to find something that was just like that immediate, like, aha, this is it. Like, this is the program that I've been searching for. Um, and even just doing that, that 30 minute session, mm -hmm. you know, connecting with you, Jennifer, I think that was so, so great because it allows you to really get to get to feel each other and see, you know, if it's going to work and, and it did. And I'm so grateful for it. My journey really began because I went to a medium last year and she connected with um, spirit, connected with my ancestors. And I was led to start my path and start the journey that I had been denying myself for so many years. Um, I grew up Catholic. I grew up being told that, you know, brujería and witchcraft and all this, it's bad and you don't want to step into it and the devil's going to haunt you, you know? And so I believed all that for so many years. Um, so I'm, I'm so thankful that I found a program to really change the, the thought process and the beliefs that were so rooted inside of me. Um, and the program was amazing. I mean, you hear little things here and there and, and everyone's at different levels and different backgrounds, right? But, and then I think I was nervous about, you know, where's everyone gonna be at compared to me? I felt like such a newbie. And, once I met everyone, it just, it was just so amazing because everyone's on the same page. We all want to learn. We all want to grow. We all want to heal. Um, so I think it was really beautiful to see different walks of life, you know, getting to see how we're all ended up in the same spot. Um, the program was amazing. I, and I, I loved every, every one that I went to. I'm so glad I didn't miss any. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it, it taught me a lot. And it was one of those also, you don't realize you already know it. You don't realize it's already inside of you. Um, so that was that was really great. And as far as the the practicums too, I mean, I remember my first one, almost not believing myself. You know that imposter syndrome of Am I making this up? Is this real? Am I actually getting this? So getting those confirmations is always really nice. And and I don't do as as much talking. I know, I know this was a little bit of of what you were what you touched on, but. I try to not get any information um, from my client. I don't ask questions like, why are they here? Um, you know, I, I don't want to know any of it for me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just see and make sure, and, and it's my confirmation maybe, let me see that I am receiving everything that I need to. Um, so that's been really beautiful because I think that really helped with my confidence, especially when doing those practices and, and really the sessions. Um, so yeah, since after, after the program ended, I didn't really know in which direction I wanted to go. You know, I had so many ideas and I would write everything down, but things kind of became a standstill of, okay, well, what's my next, what's my next step? Um, so for me, I really dove into the research of it all. Um, I purchased a lot of books. I'm learning everything and anything that I can. I attend workshops, which I absolutely love Instagram because you find everything on there, mm -hmm. um, which is actually, how I found you, um, Femme Papi, I, I actually follow you. So that was pretty cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's amazing the information that's out there. So I definitely recommend it if you can join workshops, get to know other healers in your community. I mean, afterwards, 
the way that I ended up being where I am today, where I finally do have, you know, my, the vision that I was, you know, hoping to, to have. Um, Can you I, tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. What is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, my business is called Melipona Collective. And so Melipona is a, it's a Mayan stingless bee. Um, which is very prominent in the Yucatan Peninsula. So um, there is like in Tulum and Merida, that's where you're going to see it, um, where you, you'll see more of like the honey there, more of the information, more of the, even just the sacredness of it. Um, and so I've, I've always really connected to bees. And, and when I went on my honeymoon and I went to Tulum, I kept connecting with them and I kept being pulled into it. And when I arrived to Tulum, I found out that one of the descending gods of, of Tulum is um, Amushinka, which is um, the deity for the bees. Mm. Uh, so that's how I ended up with Melipona. Mm -hmm. um, and my goal, at least for my business is, is to be a collective, to be a space where the minority can come, you know, again, we're surrounded, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're surrounded by a lot of these women that aren't necessarily researching or understanding their history, but more so kind of just grabbing onto, and I, and, and yes, I mean white women, um, mm -hmm. just kind of just grabbing onto what isn't their heritage, what isn't their culture. And while it's beautiful to learn and to grow a, amongst all the different cultures and all the different spirituality that's out there. I want to bring that spirituality closer to home, closer to the Mexicans that, you know, I grew up with, you know, I, I am Mexican. And again, it was just something that you, you stood away from because, you know, you don't want to get mixed up with that. Mm -hmm. um, and even just being here for the queer community, I think it's really important because there's just so much segregation, so much separation in it all. And and then at the end of the day, we are a collective, we are a community. And so bringing that space back, bringing that healing back to the community. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up actually collaborating with a Brown healing space here in Barrio Logan, um, which is near Coronado, if you're familiar with San Diego. Um, and it just kind of happened. I walked in there and uh, another thing that I learned from Jennifer is, mm -hmm go to as many different healers as you can expose yourself to. You learn so much and everyone is so different. You will never go to the same type of healing session ever. Um, and so I had a healing session there and it, it was such a beautiful experience that I just kept going back and they sell um, different spiritual tools there. And so my husband and I started to create our own spiritual tools. Um, so they invited us in, they invited us to, to hold that space. And so we've uh, just recently started selling there about a month ago. And it's been awesome because we've made so much money from it. And so many, okay. you know, random people, you yes. know, uh, adding on Instagram, we're like, oh, look, I, I don't know who this person is. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've sent stuff to different states already. And it's, you know, it, it wow. just happens. And yeah. I think what, what's really important is we get stuck in our heads. And we, you know, we have these ideas and we want to do all these things, but then we don't act on it. And that's where I was stuck. I wasn't acting on anything that I wanted to do. And so one day I just posted, I said, you know what, we have the merchandise, we have the words, let's put it together. And we did. And I ended up receiving a lot of, um, a lot of purchases from just that post. Wow. So I, I think it just needed to be, you know, that push, that push yeah. from spirit to just, just do it. Yeah. Um, so it's been really beautiful. And I've also been able to, um, with that same place, Copali Tierra, they've offered me um, to hold my healing sessions there too. And, and if I want to do group sessions that, you know, that's also a possibility. So I think making those connections, you know, going to your local spots, talking, connecting with the healers that are out there. I think it's really important to make those connections and get awesome. yourself out there. Awesome, awesome. And then how much in between um, when you graduated and then you started creating um, these products? Like, how do you know how many months in between it was? Just so that people yeah. can get an idea not to give up. And yes. so it might not happen overnight or it might not happen the next day after you graduate, but it may take some time. So if you can give us an idea of what that in between yeah. was. 
Yeah, definitely. So um, I graduated from the program in January and I actually didn't do my first healing session until I want to say the end of April, early May. Mm -hmm. So it did take me a few months to really get myself out there of even just being comfortable. And it was an awesome push from actually one of my uh, classmates from the cohort um, with her just telling me, hey, you know what, this is what I sent everyone to just share with our family and share with our friends and whoever is interested, cool. And, and so I did the same thing. I, I wrote up a little text message to everyone that um, had done it either through the practicum. You know, mm -hmm. if I had done a free session with them, um, then I, you know, asked them to spread the word and to, to share the space, to share the healing. And, and that's how I ended up getting my first few sessions that way. Um, and then actually creating the products, I believe it was actually around the same time, but it didn't, it took me about a month, a month and a half before I actually posted it. We just had a bunch of stuff laying around like, yeah, we'll eventually sell it or, <laughs> you know, we'll eventually do something with it. But mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I forgot to ask, I forgot yeah. to ask, I don't know if you have any of your products there. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you would yeah, like I to do, share actually. some. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. And then um, we can so, go into some questions too. Yeah, so what I create um, is altar tables and also card holders. Um, so I use a lot of tarot and a lot of oracle in my readings and in my sessions and even just in my altar space. And I had seen them on Etsy and I was about to order it. And my husband looks at me and he's like, I can make that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, well, if you can make it, this is what I want. And so we just kind of went from there. It became a very collaborative effort of, of creating these. Um, so I'll show you a couple. I do have some next to me. Nice. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is the small one. This holds one card. So I really, um, what I really love about these is we made them with enough space where you can add, where you can add crystals, where you can add, um, I like to add herbs to it. I add candles. So I make my own little mini, my own little mini one. Totally. I love that. I'm laughing so hard at Anel's face, like while you're talking about all of these, I'm also just like geeking out because I just added cards to my little crystal grid that I did for myself. And I was like, oh, I really, anyway, it's like divine yes. timing and perfect. <laughs> of course. Yes. Yeah, totally. So awesome. I mean, and that's how I started. So, and we also do some with designs um and uh, as well as um we actually put i don't have one near me but we actually put a little circle where you can actually put the candle inside of it so it holds it um but i've also used it to place my can my sorry my crystals in it too to just kind of keep it in place um we do also make bigger ones and so here's one i actually really love this one Oh my God, so that's just a so phase. Cool. Just because, you know, that is totally a, fa a phrase that I heard growing up my entire life of like, oh, you're not gay, it's just a phase. Mm. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm taking that back. And <laughs> here is the, <laughs> all the moon phases. You go. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, different colors of it all. But um, we also started making earrings. And um, so here's just Ooh, some of them, cute. like little studs. Oh my so God. Different how cute. elements. Oh, I yeah. love the elements. Oh, I got chills. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ooh. yeah. And we made some little, it's hard to see, but little moon earrings. Yes. So beautiful. Yeah. So just trying to incorporate, actually, this one, this one's one of my favorite. I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I received a lot of my messages in dream state. And um, one of the messages I received, actually, Ishel came to me. Um, Ooh. And on her face, I saw the, Mayan symbol for 13, which I had no idea what it was. I just saw two lines and three dots. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, I have to look this up and see see what it is. And I have a Mayan deck. So I'm like, it's, it's gotta be in here. And so mm -hmm. when I saw the, the representation of the yeah. 13, mm -hmm. um, I was guided to make these earrings. And so- Ooh, I love the 13. Oh my God, I have chills on my arms. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Those are so cute. I love that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so it, it's been fun because it it's a, something that I creatively I'm receiving from spirit and then to be able to actually make something and for people to appreciate it I think has been a beautiful part of the entire journey um, so including that I mean that's really how I ended up getting myself out there to do healing sessions was actually through my merchandise too so nice yeah so I just want to share with everyone um, your Instagram so this is one of the altars that they make if you can see that can you all see that 
So this is, no? Is it too bright? Can you see it now? No? A little, a little bit. bit here. Do you want to spotlight yeah. yourself? Oh. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Can you see it now? Isn't that beautiful? It's so big. So good. So nice. So yes, what yeah, was... that one's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the portability of it. I mean, I when I'm taking my stuff for sessions and I've got all my things, you know, like it just looks ends up looking messy. So having it a nice, beautiful space is yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So what questions do you all have for Crystal? Hi, Crystal. I'm the one who's Hi. making faces because I'll take <laughs> 10 of each. You didn't come ah. in the conversation when I called myself a metaphysical hoarder. To oh, yeah. Jen. Yeah, just oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, uh, I guess the question was because Jen explained to me um, that you're also you're doing this work and you're also have a job like yes. a real life job. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I'm struggling with is that I have a very demanding job. But I, I, this is my, this is my soul's purpose as well. So how do you yes. balance having a three-dimensional job in this space in corporate America, but also doing what you're doing in a space that shouldn't be very corporate or capitalistic? Mm -hmm. That was my, that was my question. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that question. And the funny thing is, uh, do you uh, use tarot at all? Are you oh, familiar with you, know, yeah. you know, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the two pentacles has been haunting me all year. Um, which the two of pentacles, you know, really trying to balance that personal and that work life and even that the balance of the spiritual life. Um, so yes, it, it has been interesting for sure. Um, I am a teacher. So that I, and this program came to me when, you know, in the middle of distance learning of I don't know what the hell I was doing and struggling with deciding whether or not I should even continue to be a teacher. Um, so I am still a teacher. Um, and, and it is something that I hope to at some point um, let go of. I, I'm really happy and proud of the work that I've done. Uh, but I know that but just like you, my soul's purpose is, is to do more than that. Um, so what I've done is I've created time frames for myself. Of So for example, every Thursday is my day where I do a circle um, of like-minded women that um, we're all here to, to heal and to help. And so we come, we join together every Thursday night. And it's become almost mandatory for us you know we it's our time to either vent to release um to call on spirit to and to even practice um so i've given myself that designated day where it's it's my duty to to show up um and mm -hmm. having that consistency is really really important um and of course you know we all we all stop or you know something happens and i miss my daily reading or you know it just life happens um but i do do that as well as just making sure that I'm giving myself that time. So every morning I, I wake up early and I do my, my morning ritual and that self-care because the self-care is going to be so important when you're doing this healing work, especially with all the people that will come into your lives and all the energy that you're going to be around. Um, and I've, I've given myself the time frames of, you know, some days I will work and other days, you know, I, I have them off completely from, from everything. Um, so I think just creating that balance of that structure for yourself is, is going to be really important because you don't want to burn yourself out either. Um, and especially when, we, and, and I don't know how long you've been in practice, but especially when you start to see more and more people, it's draining. It's draining having to put in all this energy in these sessions, and then you might not have that energy for yourself. And so really taking care of yourself is important. Um, but yeah. I, I have to put boundaries on when I, like, I, I stop work when I mean, as a teacher, I used to bring all that home with me. I, I don't do that anymore. I put that boundary on myself of like, okay, as soon as I walk out that door, my phone is off. You know, if I'm getting emails, if I'm getting phone calls, I shut all that off because I'm, I have to leave that separate from, from my life. Um, and then I have my designated days where I do my healing sessions, which are 
for me, it's Thursday to Sunday that I'm able to do it. So that's really helped. But yeah, that daily practice, that daily self-care for yourself is what really keeps you going, doing it all. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Kimba, you have a question? I'm just like processing all the things, right? Because I heard <laughs> so many things and that obviously are really divinely timed for me to hear. During um, our meditation, our like grounding meditation, it came to me that like, Jen, you've mentioned that you've channeled this program, right? Mm -hmm. Even today you were like module 13. Like I, I knew it had to be 13 because that's what I was kind of told. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and like, it, it feels like you, it's really like beautiful to witness you and to hear your story because I'm definitely pretty successful in busting through the comfort of like hiding and being stuck almost. Like I know it's stuck because I'm in pain, right? But I also don't feel like I have the energy to put my shit out there. I also am an educator and, I'm, and, and a recovering codependent. That was a new thing for me to recognize this year. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of my work with youth utilizes that. And it almost feels like that's cultural, like culturally relevant <laughs> and sensitive, but I'm like, wow, we're just perpetuating the same shit. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things that are holding me back and especially like being seen is really scary for me. Like I just don't, and I know that's like, I'm, I know part of the root of that trauma and I'm also, still holding on to that so there's so much wrestling that I'm doing still but it's really beautiful to hear how when you're done <laughs> kind of doing all that bullshit that it just flows and it's like oh I was gonna buy something and then my fucking partner was like oh I fucking made it here you go <laughs> <laughs> so I'm yeah. kind of like oh I don't need a trip mm -hmm. and I and I do want to give myself permission to continue studying and learning because that's what I want to do. That's like right. the best use of my time right now. Um, and I know that it'll come. So thank you for sharing that. I know I'm going to bust through some walls and my shit will come too when I'm ready for it. But in the meantime, nah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, I, I'm really close with um, one of my classmates from the cohort as well. And, and she's amazing. She actually started up, um, about a month before I did, she made her Instagram, she got her business license. I mean, she went the whole throttle. I haven't gotten to that point, um, but she's amazing. And, um, you know, also putting yourself and an understanding and having compassion for yourself too, of we're all on different timeframes and it's okay. It's fine to take longer for others versus, you know, others being quicker. It's okay. We're all our and our end goal is still the same mm -hmm. and just it's just going to look different um but also holding space for yourself of you know other people are going to charge differently than you and it's it's what you feel is right for you um and that's something jennifer and i spoke about um with the brown healing space that i'm a part of it's all donation based and it's all extremely affordable you know i want to say the session was 25 to 35 dollars for the session donation like you know whatever you could do and of course I, I gave more and it was just so beautiful to see it being so affordable for the community because healing shouldn't be expensive. Um, but I also understand that if we're gonna do this for a living, we also have to be able to sustain ourselves. Um, so it is, it, it's hard, but it's finding those balances of, okay, let me make some things affordable and let me do sliding scales, mm -hmm. but then also know your worth and know that you, you, know, you do deserve to, to earn more so that you can have your own living from it as well. Dang, Crystal just channeled some information. <laughs> <laughs> that was some medicine for Kimba. <laughs> awesome, thank you, on the spot. <laughs> Brittany, any questions, comments, reflections for Crystal? Not really, still just like taking in everything that was said. I actually don't have any questions tonight. Okay, awesome. Thank you, thank you. 
Can I ask another question? Of course, <laughs> of course, of course. So, Crystal, I had a question about your partnership because you you mentioned that the both of you, um, you know, you were in. Ooh, hello, I'm looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's a lot of me. Um, uh, I mean, of course. Uh, so the, the uh-huh. question had to do with your partnership. Um, you said that you were you started to have receiving spirit, and and your partner just kind of like swooped in and was like, "I got you." So how's that? How's that experience? been like so far with your partnership growing growing who you are spiritually and metaphysically with your partner who probably wasn't on the same journey I'm, I'm just really curious to hear how that works because I feel um and I'll tell you really quickly I feel so apprehensive sometimes because this is such a different space he was he, my partner was raised Pentecostal um so he's very accepting of what I'm doing and something happened last week and he actually started bringing in some of my practices that Jen has been doing with meditation so Mm -hmm. like you you were like hey I was going to do something and your partner was like I got you and then the same thing with me I'm like where did you just come from with all this stuff so how (laughs) has that journey been like with the both of you yeah yeah it's that's actually a really interesting question um it's a very common question and it's so interesting to hear all the different perspectives of it. But um, yeah, so again, my, my partner is the same. Uh, he grew up Catholic, religious, and although he didn't follow it, you know, it was ingrained in him. Um, so his family is still very much like, oh no, stay away from that kind of stuff. Um, and they know that they, they know that I dabble in it in their minds, you know, <laughs> but they don't really understand to the full extent. Um, so it was interesting because he was very um, supportive from the beginning. However, one of the one of the statements that he said at the beginning was, you know, this is something that you want to do and I'm supportive of it, um, but don't make me a part of it. Or I don't know if I can, you know, do a session or any of that. Um, so he was very apprehensive with it. Um, And actually, and it was before the program even started, I, like I said, I get a lot of my messages um, in dream state and it almost became that as soon as my journey started, his, his journey, his journey began as well. Um, So he started to receive messages in his dreams and him just learning or listening, you know, sometimes he'd be in the background of a class, you know, and he'd, he'd hear it going on and he would just be like, oh, yeah, (laughs) Uh uh-huh, or, Mm -hmm. or I'd be listening to a meditation or listening to something or, or, hey, I just read this in the book and it really resonated with me, and so he was listening, and he may not have said anything, but he was really just absorbing all the information, and so then it kind of like that, like you said, it was just a, hey, um, I noticed this the other day, what does this mean? Or, you know, oh, I had this come up in a dream. And so that that is really where our relationship started to become stronger and more unified, but it really became a partnership spiritually as well. Um, just having that connection and being comfortable with sharing with him. Um, because at the beginning I felt, I almost felt very like religious in the way that I was speaking. I'm like, oh, spirit said, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, mm-hmm. and, but it was like, it, it's real. Like, you know, yeah. and, and, and oh. it's, and it's our life. Um, and I, and I think I just had to learn to be okay with being that person. Um, and that's something that I shared, even when I posted about having graduated from this program is, you know, it was in a sense, and I, and I hear it a lot in the community of like coming out of the closet spiritually, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard to, for people to know that this is what we do and this is who we are. Um, and, so the more I started to feel comfortable in myself in that sense, I feel like he started to feel more comfortable with it all. And then he ended up letting me do a practice session on him. And it was, it was really neat for both of us um, because I was able to receive messages for him that are, and even information that he hadn't ever shared with me. So, so that was really, really neat because it, it made him a believer and made me a believer and it just made our relationship stronger. Beautiful. And now he's making stuff. <laughs> and now he's like, what does this mean? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That really yeah. means a lot. Um, I didn't tell you guys earlier, Joe helped me make a spiritual bath too. So I'm, I'm getting there him. There you go. Yes. There and he did go. it with a lot of compassion and, and love and sensitivity. So thank you for sharing that because Aww. I think like you, um, I was a little like, oh God, is he going to come with me on this journey? And he's totally been there rocking out. 
side by side. So thank you for sharing that. Crystal, I'm feeling like I wonder if you would ever do like couples who are, you know, partners who are coming together spiritually. That'd be totally awesome. Yeah. So, (laughs) and I just got chills with that. Yes, actually, um, I had a session recently, and afterwards, she did ask me if I would be willing on doing a couple session. And so, absolutely, like I am mm-hmm. down. So but I mean, like couple like group, the sessions, like a class, like we're our group or a circle oh, of couples I see, I see. coming in, yeah. and you know, normalizing mm-hmm. that, like when your partner is growing or when you, each of you are growing and. Yeah you're all learning at the same time. I think that'd be so awesome. But yeah, couples work is oh, yes. awesome too for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll take I really 10 of those too. Of <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yes. Well, I know we are getting, uh, we are pretty much out of time. Don't want to take the rest of your evening. Um, how can people get to find you? How can they follow you? How can they purchase from you? Um, what's the best way that people can connect with you? Yeah, so um, I'll actually type it in the chat. Um, but right now we are functioning mostly off of our Instagram. Um, we haven't set up like an Etsy or anything yet because it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work, um, which we do plan on eventually doing it. Uh, but right now everything's through Instagram and, and local um, trying to get into more shops. Um, but we do a lot of personalized stuff. Um, so if there's an image that if you want anything customized and there's an image of something that you're interested in, we can create that too, even logos. Um, My, I don't know if you'll be able to see this because it's kind of small, but um, this is actually our Mm. logo. It's, um, Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So it's a little bit. Yeah. So follow us on there. And if you're interested in purchase anything, just uh, direct message me and, and we can make it happen. But yeah. Yay. Awesome. Awesome. So before you go, is there anything else that you think um, we should know or for future students, um, what you can, any words of wisdom you'd like to leave us with? Yeah. um, And I think I just kind of go back to what I said at the beginning is continue to learn, um, continue to grow, expose yourself, learn everything that you can, because everything is, is meant to be everything is going to be aligned and you'll be doing sessions and be like I don't know where I'm getting this from and all of a sudden you read it and you're like there it is that's what I'm getting so so it's really beautiful just continue to learn continue to expose yourself follow random healers because they have medicine for you to share awesome awesome thank you so much Crystal for your time I wish you a good evening and thank you so much hopefully everyone. see you it. soon Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Crystal. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Gracias. Aw. Aw.